Love and Light. This is Healthy Talk Show for Monday, October 21st, 2019. I'm Robert. And I'm Marissa. HealthyTalkShow.com slash support if you want to help financially produce this show. Our show is value for value, so if you find value in our contents, please provide some back. HealthyTalkShow.com slash support. Show notes for this episode with the links of everything we talk about will be located over at HealthyTalkShow.com forward slash 26. On this episode of Healthy Talk Show, we're discussing safe oral sex and a possible solution for homelessness. But first... Leap for women in space. Hello, United States. Astronauts Jessica Meir and Christina Cook venturing outside the International Space Station and into history. The first all-female spacewalk. Oh, wow, the Baja Peninsula. Nice. Wow. Wow. Okay, wow. Mir and Cook spending more than seven hours working in outer space. Ooh, seven hours? Yeah, that sounds rough. Yeah. <laughs> a controller that helps distribute power to the space station's batteries. The milestone was supposed to happen in March, but NASA only had one suit configured for a spacewalk that was the right size. This is President Donald Trump. Do you hear me? The president calling to congratulate. You're very brave, brilliant women. Mir today recognizing her place in history. There have been a long line of female scientists, explorers, engineers, and astronauts. And we have followed in their footsteps to get us where we are today. Back on Earth, the girls in this classroom were watching in awe. It's really cool seeing um, someone with the same gender as me being out there in space and like doing something so great. There you go. Nice. Sorry it took so long. I know. I'm, glad, know. It, I'm glad it finally happened. <laughs> this is, what? Oh, I read yeah. that? Wait, that hasn't happened already? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, hey, that's great. <laughs> Need more women representation. Uh, definitely, especially <laughs> in science. CBS Pittsburgh. A former University of Pittsburgh surgeon who revolutionized the treatment of breast cancer has died. Bernard Fisher was a professor at the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine. His research brought an end to the routine use of radical mastectomy. Fisher discovered that adding chemotherapy or hormonal therapy gave breast cancer patients a better chance. Very cool. Yeah, 101. Yeah, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> CBS New York. Johnson & Johnson announced on Friday that it's initiating a voluntary recall in the United States of its popular Johnson's baby powder due to low levels of asbestos contamination. The recall, which is limited to one lot of baby powder bottles produced and shipped in the United States last year, comes in response to a U.S. Food and Drug Administration test that found levels of chrysotile asbestos contamination in samples from a bottle purchased online, according to the company. People with a bottle of the Johnson's baby powder from lot number 22318RB are advised to discontinue using the product and contact the company for a re- why, why do people still use baby powder? Yeah, I thought baby powder was bad and we all established yeah. we're not going to use baby powder anymore. I'm, I'm pretty sure we've talked about it previously on Healthy <laughs> Talk, Talk Show, show. how I'll, it's been linked to ovarian cancer. Yes. Yep. And it, one lot, it sounds small, but it's actually 33,000 oh bottles, God. according to the New York Times. Yeah, when I said one, one lot, I'm thinking, what, a little case? What? No, I don't, yeah. so eight, eight bottles, no, 33,000. Wow. <laughs> Seriously, let's just stop using baby powder. It is not good. Yeah, please. <laughs> USA Today, STD is on a, at an all-time high. How did we get here? Just the facts. Cases of some sexually transmitted diseases have now reached a collective all-time high, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Among them is syphilis, a bacterial infection usually spread by sexual contact. Syphilis. Yeesh. Got a little clip about syphilis. Wait, this, this is surprising to me, because I thought sex rates were down overall. Yes, they are, actually. Ah. This, uh, this report doesn't address that. It just goes into the, S the syphilis and stuff. Oh. Uh. The disease starts as a painless sore. Then, the sores increase and skin rashes, swollen lymph nodes, and fever develop. At this point, a sore or break in the skin may allow HIV to enter the body more easily. Next is the latent stage, where the symptoms seem to disappear. If treatment isn't received 10 to 30 years after the initial infection, it can progress to tertiary syphilis, which can affect the heart, blood vessels, brain, and nervous system. Syphilis can also be passed from mother to child, even if the infection began up to four years before pregnancy. Syphilis has actually been around for centuries and was widely feared. But by the 1940s, penicillin was found to have a near perfect cure rate for the disease. This is penicillin, a powerful destroyer. Thank goodness of for penicillin. Yeah, penicillin, the cure all. 
and by 2000, U.S. rates were so low that the federal government launched a plan to eliminate the disease entirely. Today, that goal is a distant memory, and syphilis is not the only STD on the rise. Cases of chlamydia and antibiotic-resistant gonorrhea have also <sighs> increased, contributing to the record high. Yes. <laughs> not good. And this movie, this little video from USA, USA Today goes into, you know, lack of STI education <clears throat> in schools for funding and all that. But it also talks about lock, lack of condom use. Yeah, so amongst we, the youths. Are, are they using condoms like for yes. sex, for oral sex, that's or not where, at all? That's, or? What, that's what's bothersome, is even with the people that are using condoms, you're supposed to use condoms with partners. That's why when this yes. is a healthy talk show. We're talking to a different kind of audience. If you don't know that, you need to go, go back to sex ed and go learn that. Yes. But people are shocked when you say, what about for oral? Yes. Wait, we're supposed to use condoms? What? And then some people maybe use condoms for, you know, blow job, you know, performing maybe. oral on it, maybe. But when it comes to women, yeah, I don't know. Well, no, women don't even know. They're well, here is this a public service announcement for dental dams? <laughs> yes, dental dams. You need well, them. We, we've asked well, a few people. We've asked a lot of people and nobody's used them. Yes, no one. Some people haven't even heard of a dental dam. A dental dam is, is the barrier method if you're going to be performing oral on someone who's equipped with a vagina. So now I'm wondering: are are women not getting oral? Are we not having safe? Well, oral? I'm is wondering about I'm wondering about lesbians. <laughs> yeah, they should because they are not. What's yeah, there should be more dental dams in stores. Well, I but there is a problem. There is an issue with dental dams. Look, oh these my are expensive. Gosh. Yeah, look, pack of fifty two for sixteen bucks. That's kind of expensive for. Five by five. Those are small. That's not. Yeah, the next are, one's a little yeah. more expensive. The the premium ones. Yeah, these are outrageous. I. So we have a solution. You go to Costco. <laughs> oh boy. Get yourself a a huge dental dam right here. It's just saran wrap, big thing, three thousand feet, thirteen yeah. bucks. That's a lot of dental dam <laughs> material. That's a lot. And and since this is healthy talk show, you know we're not sponsored to say that. <laughs> no, but we do love Costco. We do love Costco. Absolutely. And they they work as effective barriers, so they do. For STD prevention. That's true. Next story. Chemistry World. Structures in more than 150 papers may be wrong. A piece of code that calculates nuclear magnetic resonance signals may have has been used to discover to getting sorry. Signals has been to can you read that? Do you read that for me? <laughs> a piece of code that calculates nuclear magnetic resonance signals has been discovered to be getting things wrong depending on the operating system used. The issue could affect structure assignments in more than 150 papers. And I think that's a pretty low estimate, to be honest, calling their conclusions into question. Okay. So a couple of things. What is NMR? Yep. What is NMR? So it stands for nuclear magnetic resonance it's kind of hard to explain because it's really complex, but basically it's a huge magnet. Yep. What it does is it aligns the molecule and then it essentially lets you see it. But what's kind of hard is some of these protons are really hard to see. It's hard to distinguish. So why this is important. So let's say scientists are trying to figure out, you know, natural product isolation. So we're talking about trying to understand this could be a applicable to CBD just mm -hmm. to put it in context for people. Perfect. Or if we're trying to talk, uh, uh, figure out some sort of biochemical pathway and we're trying to do very sensitive labeled experiments. And then if they use this code to help them predict how the pathway worked or what their product was, and now this code is being called into question, this could cause a lot of issues. So. Yes. So very interesting. <laughs> it's the computer's... Yes, and it's all all because of what operating system they chose. And this is also worrisome because people don't normally document what, you know, operating system. Oh, that is very bad. Yeah. So, And, and this is crazy, too, because you, I mean, you can take a, a sample of it, you can look at the spectrum and then compare it to your simulated ones. So this is really worrisome and crazy. <laughs> We will be following this. It's very underreported right now. It's kind of yeah. hard to find information on well, this one. Oh, I, I like to, I mean, they, they mentioned that, yes, yeah, science is self-correcting mm -hmm. so that, you know, even though there were mistakes, eventually it'll correct. But 
What people don't realize about this self-correcting process is it's it's extremely slow. Yes, that's <laughs> the problem. It takes forever for it to correct. Yeah, so yeah. we'll see. Very slow process. <laughs> yeah. RT America. The LA Times just released a report on some testing that went down this year on California's drinking water sources. And they found that toxic forever chemicals, commonly known as PFAs, have seeped into the public water supply. In fact, nearly 300 water sources were found to have traces of these toxic chemicals, affecting the drinking water of millions of Californians. State officials released the results this week, which they say is the first step in a much longer effort to track the scale of contamination in California's water supply. They've only tested a small fraction of water sources so far, and they plan to continue. However, they haven't committed to statewide testing, as what they've already done has been very costly, <laughs> and what they have already found uh -uh. <laughs> will cost even more to clean up. Yeah, it's kind of the double-edged sword there. You keep looking for more problems, you keep finding them, and then yeah. you keep having to fix them. <laughs> According to the Times report, the PFAs that were found have been linked to kidney and testicular cancer, thyroid disease, and high cholesterol. And they persist indefinitely in the human body, which is why scientists call them forever chemicals. They were originally developed in the 1940s and were used in tons of household products, from food packaging to Teflon cookware to clothing and beyond. They were also used in firefighting foam used on military bases, which the Times says is a major source for groundwater pollution. I thought pollution. they were still used. In fact, they found 21 contaminated military bases in California. There is no agreed upon safety level for PFAs. The yes. EPA classifies them as an emerging contaminant. Listen to that again. To learn about. You got it. There is no agreed upon safety level for PFAs. That's not good. Yeah, that is <laughs> that is a huge problem. <laughs> so they, we really have no idea. Okay, sorry, continue. <laughs> EPA classifies them as an emerging contaminant that they are still trying to learn about in terms of what's safe and what's not. But in January, a new state law goes into effect requiring water utility companies to inform their customers if PFAs are found. Oh, no, yeah. that's going to suck. <laughs> what, what I will say, though, if you are concerned about PFAs or it is in your water, it could be taken out with an activated carbon filter. Oh, very good. Yes. Very good. So I did look that up, and that's a relatively inexpensive filter. Yeah, and that's very common. Yeah, but... For water filtration. <laughs> I'm personally super paranoid about these types of chemicals. Uh, whether my fears are founded or not, I don't know. But, because in the literature, it is... It's been linked to cancers, maybe, mm -hmm. but... Again, it goes back to the levels and the studies, and it's all these correlation studies. So it's it's very uncertain still. But I personally am a little wary of fluorinated compounds inside my body because it's it's a type of fluorine bond, uh, which part yeah. which is part of why it's so persistent because that's a very strong bond that carbon fluorine bond. So that's why it exists in nature. So it's not easily degraded by the sun. <laughs> which is usually how most organic things eventually break down. But we'll see. Yeah. Protect yourself. Protect. We use cast iron. <laughs> yeah. That's we don't, we just try to stay away from that coated crap. Yes. Just for I'm, this purpose. I'm super paranoid about it. <laughs> but that's my choice. But Fox Business had Secretary Azar on. Vaping devices, if I can on call vape. that, are illegal Anyway, I didn't know that. That's absolutely right. The Tobacco Control Act says that these e-cigarette devices actually have to be approved by FDA before they can be on the market. Now, the Obama administration said... Health and Human Services Secretary. I forgot what his title was. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Talking about the vape. Let's let these be on the market so that adults can get used to them, build a market share to get off of cigarettes. Sure. And... We carried that forward, but the problem is what we saw is just this explosion of kids using e-cigarettes, and we now have five million. Who calls them e-cigarettes? I call them vape. Yeah. Who else calls them e-cigarettes? Do you call them e-cigarettes? Who calls them e-cigarettes? That seems kind of yeah. weird that the government guy is calling them e-cigarettes. Ask at HealthyTalkShow.com. Mm kids regularly using e-cigarettes and 8 million adults and while it's important to get adults off of cigarettes and we're committed to that we can't let a whole generation of kids get addicted yeah, to nicotine because those 5 million youngsters are indeed addicted to nicotine there, at this point. I was the first lady and I were with kids last week a young girl who was doing multiple of these cartridges each one 
is a pack of cigarettes nicotine. You've got kids who have to go to AA. They're going to be in recovery the rest of Alcoholics Anonymous? <laughs> of their life. I know. Is there a tobacco version? I'm not Probably. aware. <laughs> They're so, so addicted to nicotine. The LA Times had a story that people are actually starting to use cigarettes to wean themselves off of their nicotine addiction from wait. the e-cigarette product. Yeah, that's... Wait, wait what? That's, didn't, didn't he just say that we were using yeah, the wait. vape to wean off the cig... <laughs> their nicotine addiction from the e-cigarette. Cigarettes and recovery the rest of their life. They're so addicted to nicotine. The LA Times had a story that people are actually starting to use cigarettes to wean themselves off of their nicotine addiction from the e-cigarette products. That's this weird. is ridiculous. Okay. But should, we, should they be banned? This is what the guy asks. Do you think they should be banned? And look, that's a, a foolish question. If you ban the whole thing, then you ban the device which yeah. gets people away from smoking yeah. tobacco, and that's a bad thing in itself. That's right. But, so your job yeah, you don't want to get people away from the device that's smoking tobacco. You want to send people smoking... Did he just say that? Like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> but it's weird that he asked the question and then answered his own yeah. question. <laughs> then you ban the device which yeah. gets people away from smoking tobacco, yeah. and that's a bad thing in itself. That's right. So your job really is to stop kids getting it, but supposing you had to have a, a doctor's prescription yep. to that's, get one of these things. That could be one option that Congress could look at. Uh, it's all about balance. We want the adults to have access to products so they can get off of cigarettes. We want to keep them away from kids. The key right now is we're not banning them. Congress actually said, it's Congress banned, we're starting to enforce that and say, if you have products that are attractive and available to kids, get off the market. All of you, by May of 2020, have to come into FDA and submit an application. Bye-bye. Oh, bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye, vape. So how much is that application going to be? Yep. Yep. Review that. We'll look at nicotine levels. We'll look at uh, all the ingredients. Are they safe? Uh, can the product be adulterated? And are you going to market in a way that will make them available to kids? So we'll bring can them the under a regulatory adulterated? framework. Can anything be adulterated? Yeah, they're going to look at. Yeah, they're going to look at all the factors. Your vape's going away. Yeah, vape is going away. The big tobacco companies they're into the vape now. They're going to shut everything down. It's all about the tobacco. Move the tobacco. Move the tobacco. You got to move. Yeah, what it's, it's, it's what it kind of feels like. Yeah, no one's really talking about all these small businesses that yeah, are probably going to go out because they of this. Going to go out of business. Yeah, because this eye cost device is coming out that we talked about on Healthy Talk Show. You yeah, we were. It. We were on. We were on we the were case. On it. We were on the case there. Of course, you know, tobacco has to control the market. Yeah, tobacco. what are they going to do with marijuana? That's the next yeah. step. That's the next it's, phase. It's all about Marijuana's regulation. Next. Yep. And, and we're not endorsing these e cigs either. No. But, this just should not be controlled yeah. like it's being controlled. It seems it it seems a little obvious. Yeah. Big tobacco comes in, starts buying up the bigger vape companies. Yeah. Or e cigarette. Buy buys jewel to kill jewel. Yeah, buy jewel to kill jewel. That's essentially. Yep. Yeah. And then they also they had a claim that Trump made here that they fact checked. Uh, drug prices have fallen the most in 51 years. That was his statement at the rally last night. Mm -hmm. Back it up. Is that, I'm not going to say, is that true? <laughs> it was the president who said it, but is it accurate? It is absolutely accurate. This is the Labor Department's measure of inflation of drug prices, and it is down the largest decrease in 51 years, thanks to the president's efforts. It, We've it's got his, generics. It's historic generics. levels. I don't believe it. I want to see some numbers. Yeah, I don't believe it, but nobody's talking about this. Yeah. So generic approval. Three years in a row under President Trump's leadership of historic generic drug approvals. Almost 3,000 generic approvals. $26 billion of savings just in is the that, first 18 is, months of his that, presidency. Is that deliberate? I mean, Very deliberate. Deliberate in encouragement of generics. Oh, absolutely. We are completely in favor of generic utilization, approving them. I report directly to the president on our generic approvals. He is very... More competition leads to lower prices. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah it's, generics are cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't want to talk. I, that's, yeah. well, that's interesting. Interesting little yeah. tidbit there. All right, going over to Austin, Texas, and the homeless situation over there. KXAN. 
The governor says he's getting ready to send TxDOT crews into Austin to once again clear out homeless camps under Austin's bridges and overpasses. And we already know what that looks like. Until earlier this year, TxDOT was routinely cleaning out camps under Austin bridges and overpasses. In February, a spokesperson told us the agency would provide at least 72 hours notice before a cleanup offer bags for protecting personal property, and partner with local organizations that provide services to those experiencing homelessness. But at that point, TxDOT was already in the process of transitioning cleanups to the city. The agency said it could no longer cover the annual $400,000 price tag because of expenses related to fall flooding. Today's announcement that the state is once again preparing that strategy comes less than 24 hours after the city council voted to adopt new homeless camping restrictions and just 14 days before the governor's November 1st deadline. Because the governor's threatening to come in and oh, clean man. up the situation in Austin. That's this the November like 1st deadline. Very interesting showdown. <laughs> The one thing that we hear over and over again is people don't want to come to this store, even when they're a couple of blocks away, and mainly it's because of the number of times they'll be panhandled. The new city rules that'll go into effect are pretty clear when it comes to businesses. When they're open, you can't camp, sit, or lie within 15 feet of their doors. What it'll allow people to do is still sit right here. I like how there's a scooter right there in yeah. the shot. A few scooters, actually. There's three in it's, this camera. Oh, so that was unintentional product placement. <laughs> no, no, that was unintentional. That's just what it looks like in Austin, uh, apparently. I don't <laughs> miss those scooters. <laughs> And also Crazy. still sit right next to our patio. The ordinances also say you can't be within 15 feet of homes and camping on sidewalks or in high wildfire risk areas is banned. But medians and underpasses are up to the discretion of law enforcement. If an officer believes that somebody is endangering themselves or others, they have the ability to act. It's not sufficient. City Council member Ann Kitchen wanted the changes to address those medians and underpasses, as well as flood prone areas. Well, I believe that clarity is what um, was needed and what our uh, the public was asking for. Um, the council did not agree, and so it's time for us to move on. She says it's time to focus on getting people into homes. The mayor agrees. I am putting <coughs> full tilt boogie uh, to uh, actually... He seems like he's very serious. Solving the challenge we have and ending homelessness in the city. Yeah, I trust the mayor on that one. <laughs> he just doesn't seem genuine. He's just... Yeah, yeah he's really, little... I, want, I want to help the homeless. And... <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's get into it a little bit. Austin's got some issues. They've got this thing. It's called Code Next that keeps re-popping re up, which is interesting. And I don't know how to read things, so they're going to explain it to me in Lego. Uh -huh. Maybe you've heard about something called Code Next. It's a plan to change the building code that governs what can be built where in Austin. But people have competing views about how the city should grow, so this whole process can get controversial. But let's ignore that. To start to understand what Code Next actually means, you need to know a few basic terms. So we're going to start with five. And we're going to show you what these terms mean with Legos. We're going to build a house. Before we get our house on the ground, let's talk about something called impervious cover. It refers to any hard surface. Think roads, parking lots, driveways. The city limits impervious cover because when water can't be absorbed into the ground, the risk of flooding increases. That's why driveways can only be so long. So now we're ready to put our house on the ground. The city requires it to be a certain distance from the road and from your neighbor's lot. It's called setback. Basically, it's a cushion. Along with setback, our house also has to follow the rules for building height. Our house measures in at four and a half Lego people tall. Four and a half How Lego people. How build yeah. our house is also affected by something called FAR. That stands for floor to area ratio. This rule determines how much square footage we can build in proportion to the amount of land we have. Here we have some options. Our one story house hasn't used up all of its allowed FAR, so we can add a second story. The next question is how many homes can we fit? Yeah, that's this a great is question. My gosh. Density or density. Of housing units within an area. Yeah, that's the For important example, part. For example, our single family home can Whoa. become a duplex that houses two families. How did that happen? That increases the density why not why not what this is what it, and this keeps re every year i guess from reading 
it keeps popping up. And it seems like it's just trying to increase density and trying to take away the single family homes kind of thing, pop yeah. up duplexes. And I don't think people are going to like that. But before we cut to that, actually, I want to, because we're stupid, I want to show you why they made this video with Legos. Got it? Great. Now, when you're hanging out with your friends this weekend, you can be that person who knows a little something about Code Next. And you didn't have to read 1,500 pages of gobbledygook. Wait. Little that something. That didn't teach me anything. Yeah, it didn't. So let's learn about Code Next <laughs> from the Austin citizens who put a video together on YouTube. It's, let's check this out. These are from people who actually live in Austin. Attention, Austinites. Your property rights, your neighborhood, and your home are at risk. This fall, city officials will bring Code Next back from the dead. Under the city's plan, all of Austin will be rezoned. Tens of thousands of single-family homes could be replaced with buildings up to 45 feet tall. 45 feet tall? Dang. How many stories? Up to 10 units each. Whoa. Ten of concrete in the neighborhoods will grow, making flooding much worse. Builders won't have to provide space for parking crowding the streets with even more cars. Property taxes will rise, forcing renters and owners out of their homes. Worst of all, city officials won't give you the notice of these changes. They want to rezone Austin's unique neighborhoods without listening to the people who live in them. That is pretty bad that they're not even going to notify yeah. anybody. They just want to do it and just say bye. <laughs> oh, my, my, other, my big issue is that Lego video didn't really explain anything. Yeah. It was cute. Yeah, I like it. I know it didn't explain a lot, <laughs> but it didn't explain. So what are they actually proposing? Which is what those people. Yeah. What, what the people were complaining about is what yeah. they're proposing. They're proposing we rezone everything and just in, encourage higher density housing to cover all these yeah. fam, single family homes over. That's what the, it's, which it's an interesting idea, but there's also another idea in Austin to how to another solution for homelessness is called uh, community first village. So let's take a look on at this. The current system for addressing chronic how he got started homelessness in the United States of America Alan is Graham. absolutely not working. This is a human issue that requires a human response. Peanut butter and jelly or meat and cheese. Need a need a blanket, bro? Yeah. Yeah. Mobile Loaves and Fishes was started back in 1998 in order to feed the homeless in Austin, Texas. When the truck goes out, those that are serving and those that are being served are on the same side of the serving counter. Oreos, cookie, water. There's no disconnect. And this requires a human-to-human, -human, heart to heart relationship. I mean, yeah, I know what it means. It's a simple thing. And that singularly was the game changer. Dang. That's important. Yeah. He at least realizes that. <laughs> you know, yeah, no. that's a big first step. <laughs> yeah. that all these officials don't. Take. They don't humanize. It's yeah, you got to dehumanize people. You got to get down and meet people. Yeah, all right, they let's, don't do that. All right, let's meet Community First Village. Community First Village is a 51-acre master-planned community that is designed to lift the chronically homeless up off the streets This looks of nice. Oh, yeah. Mobile Loaves and Fishes cares for the people who have experienced long-term homelessness. Many of them, 5, 10, 15, even 20-plus years. At 5, 10, 15, 20-plus. Oh, my plus. God. That's, that's, that's unimaginable. Chronic homeless. At that point, they have experienced so much trauma. We believe that the single greatest cause of homelessness, particularly in our country, is a profound, catastrophic loss of family. Yeah, that's... And then here's a longer video. One minute. Our role is to really bring them into a community where they are loved and cared about and where they have an opportunity to begin the process of healing from all of that trauma. At Mobile Loaves and Fishes, our only goal is to inspire communities into a lifestyle of service with the homeless. That's it. The neighbors that live at Community First Village are incredibly gifted human beings. One of the joys of the work that we do is being able to give them the opportunity to put those gifts and talents to work. We create micro-enterprise opportunities for our neighbors to earn a dignified income doing things that they love to do. That is so we cool. We have a car care yep. business, an art house, a pottery operation, a blacksmithing shop, a wood shop, and a full-blown organic farming operation. Oh, wow. 
Over the last two years, we've paid out more than a million dollars to our neighbors. That's putting money back into their pockets to help them to be able to earn a living and enjoy life here. <laughs> All of us desire to have purpose in our life. Yes, community first purpose. Village is yep. transforming the lives of everyone who's a part of this community. And that's the important thing to get purpose. Yeah. People need a purpose. They need to feel valued. Yep. And they're actually expanding. They're doing so well. Before I look into them a little bit, they're actually expanding. So there's a news report from KVUE ABC. This is my glass blowing studio. It may not look like much. Humble. But it means the world to Adam Yu, who's known as Earth Drum here at Community First Village. It's a lot of air in the lines. It was the one thing I could hold on to. Uh, I had a glass blowing school where I taught people to blow glass for 10 years. And this is the one piece I was able to keep when I lost my business. He was homeless for about two years. Found myself without support and without family and uh, without opportunities. He was lost until he found Community First. You need to support, you need opportunity, you need connection, and you can get that all here. But I've learned all kinds of other trades too. I've spent time in the blacksmithing and the woodworking and art house, candle making. I printed this shirt. There's about 235 to 240 people that live on site right now. And within a few months, there will be a lot more. The first phase was 27 acres. Phase two is uh, another 24 acres. Community First is expanding. So even though it may look like a construction zone now, in a few months, Alan Graham, the CEO and founder, says there will be at least 300 more homes. You spend most of your time with this being torn up, torn down, and, uh, and then it takes a long while for it to start coming back out of the ground so you can see what the potential is. They're not only constructing homes here, they're building people back up. People like Earth Drum. There we go. Wow. Community first in Austin. Doing something a little bit different. That is super cool. Yes, let me... Well, I think it also goes to show how a lot of these efforts to help the homeless uh, homeless need to start in the community. Yeah, locally. Right, because they know how to best serve the people. They interact with them face-to-face. -face. Yeah. it's. I mean, how is the state you know, supposed to tell you what to do. Yeah, they don't know you. <laughs> yeah, they don't know what's going on in yeah. your community. What they're going to do, what the government's going to do is they're going to initiate a study. We need a study. Yes. We need to find out the demos. We need yeah. to find this. We don't need that. They the community need to, should know. The community, yeah. people know. We're, or, the, or people always try to study the cause of homelessness. Yep. Well, it just starts one person at a time. Yeah, it just starts and, sh you know, it's, it just, it happens. It's a lot of... We don't need to really look at the cause like right work, now. Yeah. Why is this not? Well, we know ah. a lot of the causes, you know, from load. from drugs to lack of support. So it's also about building a nice community. So it goes back to your community. You need to be involved with your local community. Yep. And having social connections is super important. So here's phase one of their village here. It's uh, phase two. That's phase one. One, I thought this was ah, we are. I think phase one's the next tab over. No, I think phase one's this one. Oh, I thought that one said phase two for some reason. It says phase two coming soon. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So this My is bad. phase one. I saw the giant phase two. Should be phase one. Yeah. Because phase two is bigger. See right here. Right oh, now. wow. Yeah. Phase two has a lot more. So that looks pretty cool. And they are. Yeah, 100 RV parks for phase one, 130 micro homes, five laundry, restroom, shower facilities, five outdoor kitchens, community cinema. Phase that, two is. is yeah, I mean, that gardens. is so awesome. It's really nice. Coming from the apartment complex industry that yes. I'm, it's, this is crazy. How, this, how does the cost compare to? Yeah, this, well, the cost here, according to them, their operating costs for all that. Is only seven million dollars a year. Wow. Total expenses. So that's seven million. Yeah. And how much did uh, California spend to build those apartments? 
Well, they spent what, apartments. What apartments? Well, the, what, I, on, some... on our last episode, where we talked about <laughs> oh, how they how many billions? Wasn't it one point two billion? Yeah, and then they barely and put they up... haven't even finished, and they're not even done. Yeah. Exactly. <sighs> Give the money to the community first. They I can know. take care of the money yeah. for you. Apparently, California, you don't know what you're doing with your money. That's the problem. Oh, did you mention how they don't, don't take, take government money? Yeah. I don't think they take government money. <laughs> I'm fairly certain yeah, they I don't. Th- I thought you had confirmed I'm, that. Yeah, I did in an article. It says they don't take government yeah, money. But which is... Yeah, I looked through their financials. I could not find any statements that they're... So if you yeah. can find it... So that's even more awesome. And even if they do take government money, yeah, just, that's fine. Just, yeah, the fact that they're so efficient with it, Yeah, that's so incredible. It's interesting. It is. It gives hope, but we need to spread yeah. the word. We need more efforts like this. I, I have no idea what California is going to do. They have... Well, <laughs> uh, that some community has to start taking responsibility, at least, you know, on local levels. Yeah. Instead of passing the problem around to the next city, the next person, mm. or the next level, oh, now let's ask the state for money. Yeah, we it's always to, a solution. It's yeah. just, we need more money, we need more money, we right. need more money. No, people... And then they come up with excuses that, oh, we can't help them because they are on drugs they can't pass a drug test Mm -hmm. well they have to have something to live for first they have to have a community they have to have some semblance of a life of structure of people they can turn to yeah i mean this is awesome this is great but this is rare and for some reason yeah (laughs) this idea is so rare and yes okay it is a religious organization. And I'm the first person to naysay and uh, poo-poo in religious organizations, but they're very adamant that they're not pushing a religion in this community at all. Yeah. They're very adamant about that. So if they're... And, okay, it's either... You, well, what, we, we've what noticed, else do you get? <laughs> we've noticed around here, too, that the churches are pretty... Yeah, uh, very active. Yeah, and they're always giving food to the homeless. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just, you know, it doesn't have to be through a church, but... Getting involved at the local level. Yeah, churches are usually pillars of the community, though. They yeah, usually, that's just the way true. it is. You don't like it, change it, but that's, <laughs> that's, that's the way it is. Uh, yeah. Are we good? Anything else you want to add? I just wanted add? to sum up that you got to be involved in your local government. Yes. That is, our, that is our key takeaway point here. Yes. Don't listen to your government sending you stupid videos and, and saying, oh, come on, sheeple. This is, look at the <laughs> Lego model. This is what's going on. Yeah. It's, you have to read it for yourself. Read the what they're trying to do in your community. Get involved. Yeah. Start asking questions. You know, we have to take ownership back of our community. And in Austin, why aren't people asking? Why why aren't more people bringing up community first and just saying, "What the hell? What the what, yes? What is oh going my, on here?" They have something successful. <laughs> yeah. Let's learn. The city from them. needs to learn. Yeah. They need yes. to. <sighs> Instead, just oh, more more housing, more, more housing. density, more housing. But that doesn't more solve. Housing. That goes back to it doesn't solve the issue. It doesn't give them work. It doesn't give them purpose. It's just going to piss off everybody else, too. It's going to piss off everybody. (laughs) And then you know that high-density housing is not going to go to the homeless. It's going to go to all the tech industries Mm -hmm. that they're going to expand in Austin. Yeah. Yep. Just like what happened with San Francisco and L.A., Seattle. How's the affordable (laughs) housing down there? How's it going? Yeah, how's it going? Yep. Need more. Yep. Always need more affordable housing. All right. That's always the argument. (laughs) We good? I I believe so. We record Healthy Talk Show live on Mondays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's 3 a.m. UTC. Come join the fun over at HealthyTalkShow.com slash live. And please consider helping uh, to produce Healthy Talk Show by heading over to HealthyTalkShow.com slash support. Your financial contribution lets us talk openly about such topics <laughs> like we do all the time. And it also helps us remain commercial free, unbiased. And of course, we need to pay for things like living expenses and our rent. It is cold up here. Please help us heat our house. Our show is value for value. If you find found value in this show, please provide some back by visiting healthytalkshow.com slash support. And another way to provide value is feedback. We love feedback. Our email is ask at healthytalkshow.com. Call us 509-878-3229 and healthytalkshow.com forward slash social for all of our social media links. Love and light. Love and light.